Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. How many know that God is a good God? Yes, he is. It's, it's another day um, to go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and kindness for all that you are, for all that you've been and for all that you will be. We thank you for loving us in spite of us. Thank you, Lord, for washing us and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you that your word uh, is alive and made li alive in us. We thank you that your word is going forth and people that will hear it online, people that are in the room, Lord, present. We pray that you would just anoint their ears, touch their ears and their heart to hear your word and to cause change to happen, cause transformation to take place. We give you praise for what, we do, what you're doing and we praise you in advance for leading that it's done. We stand on your word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a song that came to my spirit and... Uh, um, AJ asked me if I was going to play the piano, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm probably just going to sing it from here. But Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, and he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. I sing, oh, what a change in my life. I don't know if y'all know that, but that's, that song just rose up in my spirit, and I'm grateful that God is on the inside, working on the outside, bringing about a change in my life. Is there a witness in the house? He's bringing about a change in my life. And um, I'm going to continue sort of what I started on um, Sunday. <laughs> and uh, I want to continue this. I don't know how long I'll deal with it. But when I went into one of the characters in the Bible, um, the Lord really opened some things and uh, I was able to see some things, get some revelation of uh, of this word that I'm, I'm bringing forth tonight and uh, even more um, more knowledge and more revelation from Sunday's sun message. And so I believe a book is coming out of it, Elder Sullivan. I think uh, the Lord has given us some stuff that we want to write and put and allow people to read and just uh, digest it real good. And so we want to talk about, um, Bishop wasn't here, so he, he may be a little startled. But uh, the topic is put your butt in the right place. Put your butt in the right place. <laughs> Y'all can't hear Bishop out there. Bishop, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to talk, deal with that a little bit. Um, we talked about change. We talked about change. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that God is um, allowing change to take place in my life. Um, he's allowing change to take place in the ministry, in our homes. Um, I know that there's a few people out here that um, celebrate change. Everybody doesn't celebrate change. Um, some people don't know how to celebrate change, and so they kind of get stuck in a certain mode or certain vein, um, and change becomes sort of uncomfortable for them. And uh, when you try to get them to change and go a different direction, uh, they're going to give you a hard time. It's like pulling a tooth from an elephant. And uh, they'll know how hard that, if you can imagine how hard it is to get <laughs> in the mouth, first of all, of the elephant. And then to what kind of tool are you going to use to get that tooth out <laughs> of the elephant? And uh, so it's like pulling a tooth out of an elephant's mouth um, when you talk about change. Uh, so, But change means to make different in some particulars or in some particular way. Uh, it means to alter. I want you to write these things down. Um, I gave them to you Sunday. If you didn't get them Sunday, you have a chance to 
kind of re to go over them again um, to make radically different. That means to transform. Um, we can transform. We can change. We can transform uh, to give a different position or course. That means change. To replace with another. To make a shift from one to another, which means, you can write this word down, switch. And for some of us, it's time to switch. It's time to change. Uh, sometimes we were, uh, we don't watch a whole lot of television. We may watch a movie from time to time, but um, sometimes when we're watching something and it doesn't agree with our spirit, my wife will look at me and she'll say, oh, that was time to change this channel. It's time to switch what you're looking at um, because it's not edifying to our spirit. And so we have to change. And every now and then you have to change some things in, in, in your lives. Amen? We have to change some things. And so here's some of the things that I believe that God is dealing with us concerning change. Um, how many remember a man named Moses? Who was Moses? Moses is considered um, the most Im one of the most important prophets um, in the Bible, one of the most important prophets in Christianity. Um, he is he was um, a Jew or Israelite. Um, that's who Moses was. And he was born a Hebrew boy. And uh, if you remember the story, um, his mother, the Pharaoh had sent out a, 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 a decree that they would kill all the young Hebrew boy babies. And so Moses was in that in that number and in that age group. And so his mother put him in a basket and put him in the river and sent him down the river. How many know that that was a difficult thing to do? And little did they know that Moses would actually get taken up out of the river by Pharaoh's daughter and raised in Pharaoh's home. And then Pharaoh's daughter would call for Moses' mother, not knowing that that was his mother, to raise, to help her raise Moses. How, see how God works that thing out? And sometimes we don't understand that uh, a, a setback can be like a setup. <laughs> a setback is like a setup for the comeback, amen? And so God, God had it all figured out. It was all in his plan. He was putting it all together. He was orchestrating this thing so that one day Moses would raise up and become a ruler for his kingdom, amen, for the kingdom of God. And so how many remember that song? Um, when I was, when, when Israel was in Egypt land, what does it say? Let my people go. Oppressed so hard that they could not. Uh-huh. And then it says, go now, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old. Y'all remember that? The you know, young people don't need it. They don't, they don't remember that song, auntie. But it says, tell old Pharaoh. What you going to do? Let my people go. Pastor Caleb don't even know that. <laughs> I went way back. So the story of Moses is where he had grown up. Some time had passed. Years have gone by. He had grown up and he had seen a soldier, an uh, Egyptian soldier beating on a Hebrew slave. And so it angered Moses and Moses ended up killing the soldier ended up murdering the soldier they buried him in the sand and because of this Moses fled Egypt amen y'all remember the story right so he fled Egypt ended up in Jethro's house tending to Jethro's uh cattle and sheep and herd and so this is how Moses got to the wilderness so to speak or the desert so to speak so to speak um, because he was tending to the herd or to the sheep and to the cattle and they would go around the back side of the mountain 
Y'all remember the story. They would go on the back side of the mountain. On the back side of the mountain was some like somewhat like a desert place. Now, in that desert place is where Moses heard God. Anybody ever felt like they were in a desert place? Sometimes the desert place can be the best place for you. It's quiet. My sisters and, and my niece and, and the, their children, they moved to Arizona. And sometimes they would tell us about how hot it was and the desert and the scorpions and all of that stuff. And I was like, well, y'all can have it. You know, but sometimes in those desert places, you can hear from God because nothing else is going on. It's quiet. It's, it's a little hot now. Uh, uh, a lot hot. And so sometimes we can't deal with the heat, but you can deal with that quiet place. And sometimes God wants to get us in a quiet place. So here Moses is in this desert and he sees a bush burning in the desert. Now, this is crazy. What's crazy about it is the bush did not burn up and it was not consumed, but it was on fire. What would you have done if you seen a burning bush and then you heard a voice come out of the burning bush? <laughs> Some of y'all would have ran out of your shoes. <laughs> you would have been booking. Come on now. Get me somewhere. I'm, I'm, I like the quiet, but this burning, talking, burning bush, this ain't working for me. Somebody wave your hand at me and say, I would have got up out of there in a, in a heartbeat. And so Moses finds himself in the desert, and he encounters a burning bush. Not just a burning bush that was not consumed by the fire, but he encounters the voice of God, which was speaking through the burning bush. Yeah. And so he heard the voice of the Lord. I like this because it's going to get me to where I'm going. At this time, now God is speaking to Moses, Exodus 3, around that, Exodus 3. Let's go to 3 and 2, and it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And it was probably more like Moses, Moses. I like those movies when they get that big voice. And he said, here am I. I probably would have said, here am I. Lord. What, you know, what is this voice coming out of a burning bush? Here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Somebody praise God for holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He saw God. He saw the glory of the Lord coming from the burning bush. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. How many know that God knows your afflictions? He knows your sorrows. He knows what you're going through. He knows your issues. He knows your battles. God knows everything that we have to deal with on a daily basis. He knows. He knows your sorrow. And so if he can see the children of Israel going through it, he can see you going through it today. Amen. He's God. He's all seeing, all knowing. He's all powerful. Can I get one witness in the room? 
And so God speaks to Moses and he says, Moses, I need you to do this. I need you to go to Pharaoh. I need you to tell him this. Can you imagine Moses? Here is the but. Mo Moses puts his butt in front of him. But God, I'm, I, I can't speak like people, like normal people speak. I have a speech impediment. They didn't put that in there, didn't speech impediment. I don't know if they knew that word because most of the, the Bible was written Hebrew and then we interpreted it. It was in the Torah and then we interpreted it into English. So I don't know if it was a speech impediment or I don't know if he was stuttering. Uh, uh, the Bible says that he had weight on his tongue. His tongue was weighty. And so um, what we understand as a speech impediment is, is stuttering. So he, he said to God, he said, sort of like I do sometimes, <laughs> and most preachers, preachers, they do it like it's a, it's a sport. Like, G -g -g God said. <laughs> they do it like it's a sport. That's like a thing in, in preaching, I guess. But he was answering God, and he said, God, I, 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 I can't talk like, 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 like normal people talk. They're not going to hear me. They're not. Pharaoh's not going to listen to me say, you know, because I'm going to say, let, 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 let. And Pharaoh's going to say, get him and kill him. But God said, go. And when God told him to go, he said, I'm going to be with you. Now, here's the challenge. Because I kept on reading, Elder. Here's the challenge. He said, go. And God says, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Like, what? You want me to go and tell Pharaoh, the, the one that, the, that, that's the king over all of these people and the king of, over the soldiers and he got the army and he's abusing and he's, you know, uh, uh, doing these people, the Israelites and the children of Israel and your children wrong. He's beating them and he's torturing them and you want me to tell him to let your people go? But, but God, somebody say Moses got his butt in the wrong place. Sullivan, you, see, you said that too, too well. You seem like you. <laughs> Moses, his butt was in front of him. But, but, but how many have heard the voice of the Lord at some point in your life? And God told you to go right. And you said, but. God. God told you to do something, but but I don't have the means, but I don't have the money, but I don't have the education, but I don't have the... How many have ever been there? But, but they don't see me like that, but they don't know me like that, but they don't respect me like that, but they don't... But God said, go. God said, I'm opening the door for you to go. And then God says, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. There's a method to the madness. The reason he had, that's it. The reason he had to harden Pharaoh's heart, Pastor T, is so that God can get the glory out of what was happening. Because if Pharaoh had said yes the first time Moses had came, there wouldn't have been no plagues, no nothing. And he probably would have let them go. And as soon as they left, he would have killed them and slaughtered them. But because of the plagues, there was a delay to getting to the people of God. I know I jumped. But because of the plagues, there was a delay. And so God is causing, that's it, a delay for your enemy, that your enemy can't get to you. When God has set you free, there's a delay. He can't touch you. There's a distance. Y'all ever ran in a race on the street? Some of y'all took y'all shoes off to run the race. Y'all ever ran down the street and, and, and you had to give somebody a head start? You knew you were faster than them. I know. So you gave them a little, gave them a, I used to give AJ a few steps ahead of me because I knew I was faster than him. And so, God gave them leverage. And the leverage was that there was a delay in Pharaoh getting to them. So much so that when they got to the Red Sea, y'all remember the story, right? 
they were able to cross the Red Sea in time enough and get far enough down the road to the point that Pharaoh's army couldn't touch them. So God is allowing you to get so far to where the enemy can't even touch you. He can't do nothing with you. You're so advanced in the things of God. Because you said yes to God, because you turned up your prayer life, because you turned off the TV, because you were seeking the face of God, the enemy can't touch you. You're advanced. Tell somebody you're advanced. You're so far ahead of your enemies. You're so far ahead of your haters. They can't even say nothing about you. I heard something about me, CC, some, uh, a few days ago, and I was like, that's old. I'm like, that's like five years, ten years old. Like, I'm so past that. Some of y'all need to say about some stuff, whether it's two, three days or a week. You need to look at some stuff and say, man, I'm so past that. What, you, what you're talking about is, is way back when. <laughs> it could have happened a month ago. But that's still way back when. We took pictures on our phone Sunday. And I, I looked at mine yes, yesterday. I looked at it yesterday. And I looked different from Sunday. Change is taking place. Change is taking place. Some of y'all need to go back and look at your phones. Maybe, I don't know if you know how to work them, but you need to go back and just look at the phone and say, okay, God, I see glory. Come on, I see me looking much better than I look right now. I'm in the future right now. I see a glow that's taking place even now. Amen? And so they had leverage. They were, they were miles down before Pharaoh even thought to even come after them. And he couldn't touch them because God had given them lead way. Amen? And so Moses, <laughs> Moses, uh, this, this whole journey he kept saying to God, but, 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 I can't talk. And then God tells him in Exodus 7, he says, well, I'll let, Mo, I'll let Aaron speak, be your voice. I'll let Aaron be the mouthpiece. You may not be able to talk. Maybe you can't put the words together because he's talking, man, I'm not eloquent enough. I'm not, you know, I, I can't speak big words and I can't, you know, how many come in church and, and the pastor asks you to pray and, and so you, I can't say them big words like y'all. You know, it don't take all of that. You, you may say, thank you, Jesus, for 10 minutes. I don't know. You know, whatever gets to the throne room of God, amen? Whatever gets to heaven, whatever sequences with heaven, whatever gets heaven's attention, that's what you say. A prayer is heard when it comes from your heart. Woo! So all you have to do, Moses, all you have to do, Sister Minister Neil, Pastor T, Sister Lady Wilma, all you have to do, Elder Sullivan, all you have to do is say what God said. Get your butt out the way. Say what God said. But, but God, I, they may not hear me. My voice is a little squeaky. They may not like the tone of my voice. Say what God says. My dad started pastoring when he was in his 30s. 36. I knew it was somewhere around there. Seemed like he's been pastoring all my life. But he was 36 uh, years of age, and he started pastoring. And before we started tonight, you guys were slow coming in. And I thought it was going back to the day when it was Bishop and his children. Y'all don't remember that because y'all wasn't there. But it was Bishop, Charles Jr., Julie, BV, Candace, and Christy. Christy would stay with mom. She didn't come. Home. But it was, it was Bishop and his family. And we had a few Bible classes like that. You know, I can imagine in Bishop's mind, he was Pastor Char Charles Laster, Sr., or Elder Laster. They call him Elder Laster. And so I can imagine in his mind, Lord, when is this Bible class going to grow? 
When is the church going to grow? When are we going to do some things for you? When is the kingdom of God going to expand? He began, he had just started pastoring, and it was, it was just about seven, maybe eight people coming to Bible class. Can you imagine looking out after God has called you to do something on a major level? You know that God has called you to make a difference in the community. You know that God has called you to make a difference in the city, and you're looking out, and all you see is about five to six seven people you have to unlock the door you have to turn the lights on you have to lock the door you have to turn the lights off can you imagine what's going on in his mind knowing that God has called him he wrote a book not too long ago against all odds and most of us will will go through a a, a series of, of thoughts you know, God, you call me, but uh, uh, but they're not listening. God, you call me, but nobody's coming. God, you call me, but nobody's showing up. God, you call me, but nobody's following me. God, you call me, but nobody's calling me on the telephone. Nobody's asking me for wisdom. Nobody's asking me for a word. Nobody's asking me to pray with them. Uh-oh. We got all these buts, but, but, but. But I need to tell you something in this room. God called you. God elected you. God named you. Guess what? He put his name on you. God picked you. He hand picked you. Somebody ought to say, but God. That but is in the right place. He selected you. He chose you even before you were born, even before you were thought of, even before you were conceived, before your mama met your daddy and your grandparents met them, them, you know, they, they came together and they had your mother and your father. You, before that, all of that happened, before the foundations of the world, he knew you. He already knew what you would be. He already called you. He ordained you. He said you would preach. He said you would teach. He said you would lay hands. He said you would prophesy. He said you would walk. He said you would talk with me. He said you would sing and worship. He already said that stuff before you came here. And most of us, we give God, but God, because we make crazy choices, Bishop, we make choices that we feel like God is telling us to do sometimes. And a lot of times God is just saying, wait. If you wait, can you imagine what Moses was thinking when, when God said, go and tell him to let my people go, but I'm going to harden his heart. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And Moses was, well, <laughs> why are you sending me to tell him to let the people go, but you're going to have him hold the people hostage? What, what is that? <laughs> what kind of stuff is this? So if you're sending me to tell him, to let my people go. Why don't you just, you God. That's kind of kind of kind of conversation I have sometimes. Like you're God. You could just change it like right now. I don't have, even have to wait. Like, no, we don't have to do the plagues and we don't have to do the, the curses and uh, we don't have to do none of that stuff. Just you can just make that thing just change like that. But how many know that patience was being taught? And sometimes patience. I just said something to somebody. Sometimes patience is being taught to us. And most of us don't want to, when my dad used to tell me to be patient, it's going to happen for you. I, I really didn't want to hear it at that time. Because the Lord told me that many doors were going to be open. And, and there's a time in your life that you want those doors to be open. Like, I mean, why not? I got the talent. I'm gifted. I'm anointed. Why isn't the door opening now? <laughs> so I, have to, I had to wait, and I had to learn to wait on God's timing. Somebody say, wait on God's timing. And while you're waiting, don't give God a but. But, but they, they talking about me. But they, they looking at me funny. But they, they, they acting strange. But, but, Lord, you know, you know what's going on. These people... I don't want to call them crazy. 
We got but, but this, but this. But my finances aren't matching up. Give what you have. And when you give what you have, God will give you more. That's the way it works. If you give what you have, God will open that thing up so much so till you won't have room enough to receive it. Come on, it'll be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And then you'll be wondering, like, why? It's coming. It's coming so much. You know, I can't even, I can't even hold it. I can't even. It's so much. God is blessing me so much. And that's where he wants us to be. And that's where he wants to get us to the point that we're living in the overflow. That's why we got, we got to get the butts out the way. We got to, but I'm this, but I'm that, but they said I'm this, but they, you know, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not smart enough. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't go to college. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to Bible college, and I didn't go to, to get a degree. I don't have my degree. You know what? I, I need to encourage somebody. It doesn't matter if you have a degree or not. The promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or north or the south, but it comes from God. And when God is ready to promote you and when God is ready to lift you up, it's going to happen. And he's trying to get us to the place, Pastor T, that we're saying, but God. Well, how did you get there? God did it. Come on. How did you, how did you get to that level? And how did you get that job? That's a, that's a manager's position. I remember my wife would come home sometime and she would be talking and she would say, she would say, um, you know, somebody said that I, I, didn't, I didn't deserve this, this place or this position, you know, because I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't get educated on it. And so when God gives you something, no man can take it from you. Come on. When God opens a door, not, nobody can come by and try to shut it, slam it. They can't do nothing with that door. When God opens it up, it's open. Somebody need to praise God for open doors. And it's that season, somebody. It's that season. It doesn't matter what they say about you. <laughs> but God, because you wasn't there when I was down low. You wasn't there when I was battling depression. You wasn't there when I was caught up in my sin and in my situations. You wasn't there. And so you don't know what God brought me out of. You don't know the depths of what God has brought me through. You don't know what it took for God to bring me out of that low place. And so I don't give God, but, but God, I'm not, you know, because whatever I am is what he's making me to be. Come on. God is not through working on me. I don't know if y'all feel like he's through working on you, but he's still working on me. He's making me become what he wants me to be. I will be what God said that I am. I will be the prophet. I will speak. If he tells me to speak to Pharaoh, come on, somebody ought to wave their hand. If he tells you to speak to Pharaoh, Lord, I'll go. Whatever you want. If I have to go and talk to the boss, I need to go do it. I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus because I know that he's with me. He's with me. Come on. We need to get the attitude but God. But God, even though the situation doesn't look like it's working in your favor, you got to have this crazy faith to believe that it's changing while you're walking. You got to have this crazy faith to believe that it's changing while you're going in that direction. Come on. When you're going and you, you need to talk to the boss. <laughs> you're going and you need to talk to the boss. Wherever you may be going and you need to work something out, it's working while you're walking. The more you walk, the more God works. Because your, your walking is faith. Your walking is faith. Your walking is saying, Lord, I believe you're going to bring me through every test that I'm going through. You're saying, Lord, I believe that you're going to get you're going to get all the glory out of what I'm going through right now. Lord, I believe that you're going to get me on the other side of this. That's what your walking is saying. Lord, I believe that you're with me. And when I speak. You're going to speak through me. Come on now. So we're going to put our butt in the right place. 
And we're going to allow God to use us for his glory. This is the day. This is the hour that things are changing and they're changing fast. And I need to encourage somebody in this room and those that are watching online. God is in need of you. Well, well, Moses, why are you saying that? Moses, Pastor T, was 80 years old when he went to Pharaoh. 80? He was 80. Can you imagine what Moses was saying? Lord, I'm way too old to be going up against Pharaoh. They will kill me before I make it to Pharaoh's palace. They'll kill me before I make it past the gate. I'm way too old. I can't run. I'm on a cane. I got a rod. I'm way too old. I got a staff. I can't run. <laughs> we had to go in the story so y'all can understand. Moses was 80 before he went to Pharaoh. And can you imagine in 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 his mind that, Lord, I'm, I'm feeble. I know they lived to be, Moses lived to be 120. And they, they lived long years. And we got some people that, that, that's living past 100. And they're strong. I saw somebody doing some push-ups. They passed 100 years old. I said, whoa, I don't know what they eat. <laughs> but whatever they doing, that's what I need to do. What's, what's in your water? What's in your food? They're not in this country, of course. Don't, don't write that down. But Moses was 80, and he had to go to Pharaoh and say what God said. And what do I say? Who do I say sent me? He said, I am sent you. Tell him, I am sent you. Tell him, I am said it. Come on, I am that I am. I'm everything you need. I'm everything you want. I'm every, I am everything you desire. I'm, ev I'm your strength. I'm your joy. I'm your peace. I am have sent you. And so I've sent you. I've called you. I've elected you. I've picked you. I've chosen you to do the work of the Lord and of the ministry. Let's put our butt in the right place. But God, who called you? God did. Who healed you? God did. Who delivered you? Come on. The doctor said one thing, but you have to be like Mother Laster. She said, but God. I know that's your report, but God's report is, it trumps your report. But God, he changed that thing around. He transformed it. Around. He changed it. Come on. And he's still doing it. Can I get one witness in the room? Still doing it. I see you, Deacon Randers. Amen. But God. So Genesis 50, and I'll, I'll close with this. Genesis, Genesis uh, 50 and 20. But as for you, you meant it. You meant it. You meant evil against me. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many people lives you may have meant something for evil your haters may have meant something I remember and I'll, I'll be closing with this I remember going through something in my life that I thought I wouldn't get out of that I thought I wouldn't make it through Tori I thought I was messed up I thought I was, I thought this was the end of it. This was the, one of those seasons that we stood at the top of the bridge. We contemplated some things. I've been there. And so I thought I wasn't going to get through this thing. But sometimes the Lord allows you to go through things so that you can get in his face. And somebody may be frustrated about what they're going through because you're looking and you're only looking at what you're going through. But sometimes we need to change the way we look at it and say, Lord, you, you must be doing something right here. You must be doing something in my life. You, you're, you're on a, <laughs> this is the path where I know that this thing is meant from evil. 
This, this is meant to take me out of here. Totally, 100% auntie against me. But God. And I believe that God wants to give us a but God moment. I believe he wants to give everybody in this room, everybody who's watching, a but God moment. I know that it looks crazy right about now. It looks crazy. Some of us going through some stuff that we, can, we never imagined that we would go through. But God, we need a but God moment. We need a but God moment where he steps right in the situation and totally change that thing, totally transforms it, totally fixes it, and cause that thing to work for our good. How many want some of that stuff to work for your good? I mean, I need this thing to work for my good. Because God, you said it would. Come on. It will work for my good. And so I trust you. I believe you. I stand on your word about it. Come on. I believe that Romans 8, 28 says what? For we know all things work together. It's working together for my good. Them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose is working for my good. I just don't feel like it's working right now, but I know it's working right now for my good. Come on. And I'm somewhere in the future looking much better than I look right now. It won't be this way always. Weeping may endure for a night, but what comes in the morning? What comes in the morning? And joy is coming. I believe it's coming. Joy is, is, is right there. It's not, a, it's not in a distance where I can't see it, but I, I can see it just like I can see Caleb, just like I can see Pastor Christie, Pastor Caleb. Joy is right there. It's in reaching distance. All you have to do is reach. Somebody reach. Come on, reach. Have your butt God moment. Reach for it. Reach for what you need. Lord, I need that joy. I need that peace. I need that. I need that right now. I need that mercy. I need grace. I need grace to be able to operate in this season. I need more grace. Come on. Turn it up for me, Lord. Turn it up. Let it, let it overflow. Let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Ghost just overflow in my life. Let that fire just burn on the inside. So I won't take things <laughs> like I normally take them. And I won't handle things in my flesh. But I'll handle it in the spirit. How many want to handle some stuff in the spirit? And then, as a matter of fact, how many want God to handle some stuff for you? How many just want to sit back sometimes? Sit. I got a big daddy chair at home. How many just want to sit back in the chair sometime and just say, go, God, you just handle that. You, you take care of that right there. You got that, you know. Somebody need to just say, God, I know you got it. So I'm going to let you handle it. I know you got it. Come on, I'm going to let you handle it. We get frustrated because we're trying to handle it. Oh, I was to myself. We get frustrated because we're trying to deal with it. And, and that's not the way it was meant to be. Let God do it. Let God fix it. Mom used to say to me all the time, she would say, you know, because I want to come and, and kind of vent. Mom, they said, they said such and such. They said, Auntie, I'm talking to Mama. She said, they, they said this, and they, they said, and I want to just kind of talk about it and, you know, just say what I got to say. And she's like, did you pray? I was like, ouch. Man, I can't even vent. I can't even just kick and scream and pout and have a tantrum. Did you pray? I want to kick and hit the floor, Josh. I want to just fall out and kick and scream. But did you pray? No, I didn't pray. No, I didn't pray. You know, and somebody just needs to try that. Try talking to God for a minute. Try talking to him. Try praying. Try communing with God. <laughs> She's singing. Try communing with God and watch him work that thing out for you. Watch him work it out. Pastor Christy, come. I need you to pray. 
Can you stand with us? Mike. Did you pray? Because when you pray, you'll have a but God moment. Your mic on. Hallelujah. Come to the camera. And just pray. Pray for those that are online. Pray for those that are in this room. Father, we come before you as humble as we know how. We thank you for allowing us to gather here today, you, online and in person. We thank you for just being God. We've come to the conclusion that there's none like you in all the earth. You are the Holy One. You are I am that I am. There's none beside you. There's none like you. You are the one true and living God. And we bless your name tonight. We come to the realization that we are nothing without you. It is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. God, we thank you for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you for this moment that we have to be able to come before you boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. Father, we thank you for this moment, this moment with you. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted, but we thank you for this moment with you. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you, to cast our cares upon you you for we know that you care for us father we ask that you would forgive us for laying excuses before you for giving you reasons and trying to come up with rationale as far as what we cannot do but we're going to go forward in you and we say yes to your will we say yes to your way we humbly submit ourselves to you no more excuses no more reasons no more rationale that why we can't do what you've called us to do but just as you called Moses to do a task for you just as you called Moses with his issues with his speech impediment we will go forward even if we have an issue even if we have some insecurities we will go forward we will say yes to your will so we push every excuse aside right now in the name of Jesus every butt that we put in your way we push it aside right now in the name of Jesus and we lift our hands to you tonight God and we say yes to your will we say yes to your way we say yes we'll obey we know that if we are willing and obedient we will eat the good of the land so tonight God we are willing tonight God we will be obedient if you tell us to prophesy we'll prophesy if you tell us to minister we'll minister in the grocery grocery store, in the church house, in the mall, whatever your will is for our lives, God, we say yes. We believe what you say about us. We don't care what the world has to say, but we believe what you say about us. You called us the head and not the tail. You called us above and not beneath. And we will say yes say yes to your will and we say yes to your way so any health conditions that would try to interrupt your plan we cast them aside and we send them back to the pits of hell from whence it came any mental conditions that would try to block your plan we send it back to the pits of hell and we thank you for healing now in the name of Jesus any family issue that would hinder us from doing your will we lay it aside we surrender it over to you right now in the name of Jesus whatever it may be whatever
whatever it may be, anything in our heart that would try to hinder us from doing your will, we submit it to you now, God. We surrender it over to you because who you called us to be before we were formed in our mother's womb is who we are today in the name of Jesus. Your word has not changed concerning us. Your word and your plan has not changed concerning us. So we submit to your plan. We submit to your will. And we cast aside every weight that would so easily beset us. We cast it aside in the name of Jesus. So tonight, Father, we offer up a praise for you not leaving us when we had excuses. We offer up a praise of thanksgiving for you holding on to us when we wanted to walk away. We offer up a praise tonight for you loving us when we felt unlovable. We offer up a praise tonight for you keeping us as we go through our valley of decisions. We offer up a praise tonight because you are a good God and there's none like you in all the earth so we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name we bless your holy name we bless your holy name for keeping us and protecting us father we bless your holy name for healing the broken heart tonight we bless your holy name we bless your holy name. We know that you are able. We know that you can. And we know that you will. We lay our petitions before you. And we walk in expectancy, believing that you're going to show up and honor our sacrifice yes, tonight. Yes, yes. Believing that you're going to show up and honor and answer every prayer tonight. Every prayer that is spoken out of our mouths. Every prayer that has not been spoken. Father, you know the hearts of your people and we stand in expectation for a mighty move from you and we won't sway to the right or to the left we'll stand we'll stand we'll stand in the evil day we'll stand we'll stand and even when we feel like we can't stand we'll continue to stand an expectation Hallelujah. of a miracle to come our way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name come of Jesus. Come on, seal it with a praise. Hallelujah. Like you know. Thank you, Jesus. God has a plan Thank for you, your Jesus. life. Right? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give him a thank you, Jesus. Come on. We give you And you are worthy to be praised. Come on, one more time, lift it real loud. Everybody sing. We give, we give you all the glory. Can we do it one more time? Come on. And we're going home. Everybody listen and say, yeah. We give yeah. you Come on, somebody lift him right there. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Elder Sullivan, if you can get the offering bucket, let's sow into this atmosphere. Let's worship God in our giving. We give you the glory. The glory. You are worthy to, to be praised. Yeah, 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 yeah. We give Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that's coming alive in us. We thank you for each and every one that are watching online. And we thank you for those that have made a commitment to this ministry and that said yes to you and yes to your will, yes to your way. We thank you for those that have made the sacrifice to come out. Bless each and every one of them, every household, every person, every adult, every parent, every child. We thank you for what you're doing, and we praise you in advance. We believe it's, it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody give God a praise, and you are dismissed. Thank you for coming. We'll see you Sunday at 11. Please wear your white. It's Pentecost Sunday, and we're going to have a wonderful time. We have a treat for you on Sunday. Hallelujah. Yeah, we give.